The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Thank you. Our next uh, presentation is the rheology of control flow concrete. Control flow concrete. And uh, uh, Dr. Nathan Treger will make this presentation, and I'm sure he will also introduce his uh, co-presenters. Yes, Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, Terry Harris couldn't be here to give the talk uh, today, so um, I'm stepping in. Uh, so, I, first, I just want to acknowledge the other people that are on this. I had a very tiny, tiny part in this whole thing. Uh, so, Terry Harris, Elizabeth Burns, uh, Alex Reeder, Josh Curdo, those were the main people that really pushed this program through. Um, and it, they did it in a very short time, so it's a very interesting uh, uh, project. Uh, so today, uh, I'll be talking about the, the rheology of control flow concrete. Uh, and this should drive, I think, with a lot of things that have already been said uh, earlier in the presentation. So just to start off, we all know what SCC is. Uh, Non-segregating can fill, fill the formwork, uh, and then it can go around reinforcement as it needs to. Uh, this next sentence, though, SCC is a concrete made with conventional con uh, materials, right? But we all know that the mixture proportions are not are not the same. Uh, we have to either do something usually in terms of the segregation resistance. So that's either powder content or that's uh, particle packing as we've heard earlier today. Uh, but today I'm going to be talking about uh, use of a novel admixture package uh, that includes uh, viscosity modifying agents and also PCs to help stabilize. So that's, that's the uh, main point of today's talk. So as we see here, we all understand the conventional concrete, the proportions, and like I just said, um, part, uh, it needs to be increased. All right, so there's a lot of uh, challenges in producing ready mix concrete, especially in uh, uh, well, the ready mix. Precast, we saw uh, there's quite a bit of penetration, especially uh, here in the US. Ready mix penetration has been rather slow, though. Some of the issues, uh, the mix proportion is complicated, or it's, uh, it takes a lot of time to understand and become familiar with the proportioning. Uh, high cementitious factor, so this comes at significant costs. It's difficult to finish. And then, of course, you have shrinkage issues. Uh, the production of SCC can be quite a challenge, too. Uh, it, you need to really control the amount of water that you have in there. Uh, if not, you either don't get the flow that you need or you start to segregate your mix. Uh, and this, this, all of these things lead to limited applications for SCC, uh, and, which is unfortunate because it has a lot of benefits, and I think we probably covered those in earlier uh, presentations. So to mitigate this risk, right, the, what the ready mix producer needs to do they need to either increase uh, their expertise and experience so they can deal with these things on a daily basis to make t consistent SCC, uh, but also the material costs increase. And this comes both with cement and then uh, use of different admixture packages as well. So what we tried to ask ourselves was what, what if we could have best of both worlds, right? With traditional concrete, conventional concrete, you, you understand how to make this day in, day out. Material costs aren't very high. Uh, and uh, the mix proportion is a lot simpler. Because uh, in a lot of cases, you really want that flowability, but you don't need the high strength for it. It's really in terms of placeability that, that you're looking for in the SCC. Uh, with the conventional concrete, you also have lower cementitious content, uh, the moisture tolerance. So what I mean by this is that if you add a gallon of water or, or you're low a gallon of water, you know how to respond to that. Uh, and it's not going to ruin your mix when you get to the site. Uh, obviously, normal concrete uh, typically has higher segregation resistance. Uh, and finishability is also a very important uh, aspect. So in the, the previous uh, presentation, uh, with certain way, certain um, cement contents, you can get a really sticky concrete that's very difficult to finish, uh, where you don't have that with normal concrete usually. Uh, with SCC, you get the, the, the nice flowability, the minimum vibrations leading to labor uh, uh, reduction, and then also uh, flowability retention is also very uh, nice with SCC. 
Uh, and the last thing is that, like I talked about before, you can pump this, you can place this very, very rapidly. So what uh, the team has been working on is this novel admixture formulation. And what I show here is uh, kind of a uh, evolution of the admixtures, the, par the, the uh, polycarboxylates and the uh, superplasticizers that we've been dealing with. So here you have a mid-range, and so what I'm showing here is basically the concrete value, right? So the value to the contractor, the producer that they can generate from this. Uh, and then on the, on the x-axis is the water reduction. Uh, so as we've been developing new and uh, newer admixtures, you can see we're trying to give more value to the concrete, uh, and you can get this value in different ways. So when we think about traditional mid-range and high-range water reducers, you're looking at material savings, right? You can take out cement, still get the same flowability. Um, however, it's still labor-intensive. When you go all the way to SCC, uh, you start to get labor savings, savings, you get fast placement, but on the other hand, you start to get higher costs either with the high powder content, for example. Uh, and then like we just discussed, the QC can be quite intensive. So what we tried to do was come uh, into this middle area and try to develop admixtures that really allow you to take a conventional concrete mix without changing the mix design, adding an admixture, and achieving close to an SCC performance. All right? So it's not going to achieve your full 30-inch flow, but for those ranges where you're looking at 20, 25 inches, that might be uh, uh, very well suited for the applications that you're using this. So if you design this right for the right uh, applications, a drop-in admixture to change your normal mix design into a higher performing uh, mix design is what we're talking about here. So with that, you can start to realize some of the savings on both of these sides uh, to really increase the, con the concrete value. So I do want to make a point. It's not that we're just taking an SCC mix and reducing the admixture. Uh, we're not, uh, but we're, what we're doing is starting with a conventional concrete mix with the low cementitious uh, or typical cementitious and then bringing it up to an enhanced concrete with the use of admixtures. All right, so just to make that point clear, uh, here you can see the proportions are the same for what we're calling this control flow concrete, uh, but we're still able to achieve quite a large slump flow here. And, of course, man, your, your segregation resistance. So this is just an example um, of this control flow concrete. So you can see it flows very well. Uh, it's, not, it's not as flowable as SEC, so you can see the edge here isn't flowing all the way to the end. But uh, particularly for this case, you can see for these, the formwork that's here, there's a tiny gap underneath uh, and so you, with SCC, sometimes, especially if it's bleeding or if it's starting to segregate, you'll get run out, uh, runoff underneath. Um, and with this control flow, you really get a nice uh, edge stability so that you can maintain the flowability uh, but keep everything in the form. All right, so now just getting to the rheology. Uh, this is just a, kind of a plug for one of our ACI documents that we finished in uh, uh, 2017, that should say. But this was a result of ACI 238, so workability. Uh, this is a document on rheology and how you can use that to, to maintain your, uh, uh, your production, basically, how to use rheology in production. So here we have two different uh, yield stresses. Uh, what we're talking about here are static and dynamic. And uh, basically for the static yield stress, you're doing what's called a, a stress growth. Uh, protocol where you're increasing the strain slowly and seeing how the stress develops. This maximum shear stress is what we call the static yield stress. So this is kind of the stress required to get your concrete to start flowing. On the other hand, you can talk about the, the being a model uh, and the dynamic stress. And basically, this is the stress required to stop your concrete from flowing. All right, so one's going from rest to flow. One's going from flow to rust. And these are important because uh, you just saw in the last video, you need to get the concrete moving, but as uh, it gets near the forms, you don't want it to keep going. You want it to stop at some point. So it's a careful balance that we're talking about. 
so what the team did, they used an ICAR rheometer. Uh, this is just an example of some of the mix designs that we've done. You can see for normal concrete, as you expect, you get a much larger static yield stress. Uh, with the addition, again, with the addition of the admixture, without changing the mix design, you can get a, a very nice decrease in your, uh, basically, what would turn out to be the yield stress. So this indicates an increase in your slump flow. Uh, and then down here, you have your SEC. Right, and the SEC is a uh, properly designed one, so it's a different mix design, um, but it's been uh, properly designed. So that's for the static yield stress. To get the dynamic, you have to do a flow curve. Uh, so what happens here is you're stepping down uh, the strain rate that you're applying to the concrete, uh, and at each of these steps, you're measuring the stress. And so what you can do is for each of these levels here, you can get a final or average value for each one of the steps. And you can plot it versus the uh, what's here is the spindle speed or the strain rate. And you can start to see how the concrete evolves as you move faster and faster. Um, so you can get two things out of this. You can get the intercept, which gives you the yield stress. Uh, and then you also can get a slope of this, which gives you an idea of the viscosity. And so what we did here was plots, basically, we did a bunch of different mixes, uh, slightly different mix designs here and there, but I do want to point out that uh, right here's the normal concrete, the conventional concrete, and then with the same mix design, corresponding mix design, we added the admixture. And so uh, you, you have your control flow concrete here, and then down here you have your properly designed SEC mix, which again, if you look at this, this is a result of your proportioning change, so your increase in cement content, which is shown here. So it's a, a nice SCC. What you can also do uh, is just overdose with a conventional high-range uh, water reducer, so a super plasticizer. And so what you'll get here is you won't get the viscosity. Uh, you can't maintain the viscosity, so that drops your yield stress goes down and you get a segregated mix here. So what you can do with this control flow admix is on top of, again, on top of the, your current mix design, uh, you can drop it into the right balance where you don't get the extreme slump flow, uh, but you get a, a decent slump flow without the, se with the segregation resistance. All right, so if you're just looking at performance examples, uh, this is what you have, uh, 3,500 PSI, so this is typical ready mix concrete. Uh, you can see the advantages uh, over both the normal concrete and the self-consolidating concrete uh, with the control flow uh, mixture here. And the thing I just want to point out is that, again, the cement content is the same here. We're allowed to get um, keep your segregation risk low, uh, but also get your flow ability. The other benefits too are uh, you get the you keep the moisture tolerance, your quality control stays the same. So with SCC, usually you'll have a, a, an extra effort in terms of your QC, and of course all the shrinkage properties are are easier with the lower cement content. So we've been using this uh, for projects. Uh, these are just some of the projects that we've been using with the control flow concrete. So they've been uh, all over the world in India, Vietnam, uh, Jacksonville, and also Singapore. And so just to give you an example, this is uh, Landmark 81 in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. This is the tallest building in, in Vietnam, and it's also the 11th tallest in the world. So this is one of our other scientists here. He got to go all the way up to the top of the uh, uh, final pour. And this is, uh, so this is pumped all the way to the top, 400 meters. Uh, and you see the concrete's coming out pretty nice. All right, so just to wrap up, this just goes through some of the benefits that you see. So again, you get the flowability and our filming crew. You have an example of the finishing, finishability with this concrete. So you need minimum consolidation because you're, yes, because you're, uh, it's not quite a CC. Okay. So you guys get the idea. 
All right, and then with that, I'll take questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh,